Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The ceremony will begin momentarily. As a courtesy reminder, please silence all electronic devices and remove all identification badges as photos will be taken throughout the event. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of our host, Lieutenant General Christopher O. Mohan, Deputy Commanding General and Acting Commander, United States Army Material Command, we would like to welcome you to the U.S. Army Security Assistance Command Assumption of Command Ceremony as we welcome Brigadier General Alan J. Pepper and his family. The U.S. Army Security Assistance Command, or USASAC, plays a critical role in our country's national security by implementing approved Army security assistance programs, including foreign military sales of defense articles and services to eligible foreign governments. Headquartered at Redstone Arsenal, and in cooperation with the entire Army Material Command family, USASAC leads the Army Material Command security assistance enterprise by managing security assistance programs and foreign military sales cases to 
build partner capacity, support combatant command engagement strategies, and strengthen U.S. global partnerships. Today, USASAC manages more than 6,600 foreign military sales cases valued at over $282 billion. In support of our country's national security objectives and the Army's full range of military operations. After almost 60 years of growth and change, USASAC remains proud to be known as the Army's face to the world. At this time, we would like to welcome Brigadier General Pepper's spouse, Kristen, their daughter, Elizabeth, and her spouse, Matt Moore, his father and stepmother, Mr. and Mrs. Klein Pepper, his mother and stepfather, Mr. and Mrs. Don Derringer, and attending virtually, their daughter, Anna, and brother and sister-in-law, Mr. and Mrs. Brian Pepper. <clears throat> We would also like to welcome our distinguished guests, Lieutenant General Mohan's spouse, Cindy, Command Sergeant Major Jimmy J. Sellers, Command Sergeant Major, U.S. Army Material Command, and his spouse, Seanette, Command Sergeant Major Steve Burnley, Command Sergeant Major, U.S. Army Security Assistance Command, and his spouse, Victoria, Dr. Myra Gray, Deputy to the Commanding General, U.S. Army Security Assistance Command, Lieutenant General Gary Spear, U.S. Army Retired, and his spouse, Catherine. Ms. Kristen McBride, the civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army for North Alabama. Ms. Marion Wicker, Executive Deputy to the Commanding General, U.S. Army Material Command. Dr. Joe Fitzgerald, civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army, Emeritus. Major General Gavin Lawrence, AMC G3, and his spouse, Becky. Major General Lori Robinson, Commanding General, U.S. Army Aviation and Missile Command. Mr. Brian Toland, Command, AMC Command Council. Mr. Patrick Mason, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Army for Defense, Exports, and Cooperation. Mr. Miles Miyamatsu, Principal Deputy G3, AMC. Ms. Renee Mosier, G4, AMC. Mr. Jeffrey Carter, AMC G3 Office. Mr. Joseph Junta, Executive Director, ACC Redstone. Colonel Aaron Ike, Garrison Commander, Redstone Arsenal. Command Sergeant Major Julie Harris, ACC Command Sergeant Major. Ms. Akela Bailey, Oakwood University Aeolians Choir. We also extend a special welcome and are honored to have some of USASAC's previous commanders and senior leaders. Former Commanding Generals, Major General Mark McDonald, U.S. Army Retired. Major General Bruce Scott, U.S. Army Retired. Former Deputy of the Commanding General, Mr. Robert Moore and his spouse, Marguerite and former Sergeant Major William Condart, U.S. Army, retired. And to all our other family members, friends, general officers, distinguished guests, community leaders, service members, industry partners, and civilians, welcome and thank you for attending today's ceremony. <clears throat> On the field before you are the colors representing the three subordinate organizations of USASAC. From left to right, they are U.S. Army Security Assistance Training Management Organization, SAPMO, headquartered at Fort Liberty, North Carolina, and led by Colonel Gregory Holmes and Command Sergeant Major Robert Allen. Office of the Program Manager, Saudi Arabian National Guard, headquartered in Saudi Arabia and led by Colonel Wade German. And the U.S. Army Military Assistance Group, headquartered in Saudi Arabia, led by Colonel Jason Niffen. The official party for today's ceremony consists of Lieutenant General Chris Mohan and Brigadier General Alan Pepper. Ladies and gentlemen, please arrive. Please stand for the arrival of the official party, the rendering of honors, the singing of the national anthem by Ms. Bailey, and the invocation by Chaplain James Hall. Lieutenant General Mohan is deferring his honors to Brigadier General Pepper in recognition of his assumption of command.
say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the peril fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Or the land of the free and the I invite you to pray with me. Dear Lord, we come before your throne today thankful, thankful that we're able to celebrate the assumption of command of Brigadier General Alan Pepper. We thank you for that great rendition of our national anthem. And we thank you for a beautiful Alabama morning. We thank you for the service and commitment of the Pepper family as they serve yet another in another place in the army supporting your soldiers and civilians. We pray for your blessings on this ceremony on Brigadier General Pepper's command on USASAC, its soldiers and its civilians and ask Father for your presence here today. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Bailey and Chaplain Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. At this time, Captain Ryan Cannot Be Cough will, be, will present Brigadier General Pepper's spouse, Kristen, with a bouquet of yellow rosebuds. These rosebuds symbolize a new beginning at USASAC. In time, the rosebuds will blossom, as will her relationship with the soldiers, civilians, and their families. Ma'am, welcome to Team USASAC. <laughs> the Assumption of Command Ceremony is a time-honored tradition that dates back more than 200 years, when battlefield leaders were distinguished by special flags or pennants known as colors. Over time, the passing of the colors became symbolic in identifying new leadership and is an active tradition used to signify the changing of commanders in military organizations. Ladies and gentlemen, the official party will take their position with the colors. Today, the passing of the USASAC colors symbolizes the unit's transfer of command to Brigadier General Pepper. With the transfer of the colors, the organization's legacy is passed as building blocks for future performance and achievement. Historically, the, covers ser the colors served as the point around which soldiers of the organization rallied as they moved forward into battle at the side of their commander. Even when the commander fell, the colors were carried forward. Although all others within the organization might perish, the colors and spirit of the unit live on forever. By authority of Army Regulation 600-20, paragraph 2-5, the undersigned assumes command of the United States Army Security Assistance Command, effective 6 September 2024. Signed, Alan J. Pepper, Brigadier General, United States Army Commanding.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Deputy Commanding General and Acting Commander, U.S. Army Material Command, Lieutenant General Chris Mohan. Well, good morning, everybody. I have to tell you, it is a beautiful day in the Tennessee Valley. The last time I stood up here, it was the, uh, I said it was the first day that summer arrived. And at this time in the morning, it was about 100 degrees and 150% humidity. And so this is a very, very welcome change. So Alan, you're, uh, you're already starting off on a good foot, bringing in the nice weather with you. Uh, so today is a wonderful day. It's a perfect day to officially welcome the commanding general, the new commanding general of U.S. Army as Security Assistance Command, Brigadier General Alan Pepper. Um, and I want to say, first of all, thanks to Miss Bailey for that wonderful, Miss Bailey, I'm not sure where you went. Um, thank you for that wonderful rendition of the, our national anthem. Um, it is, uh, it is, it is, you think what we have to do is hard? That's really hard. And, uh, and so, uh, so thank you for, very much for that. Let's give her a big round of applause. Hey, Chaplain, thank you for that invocation. It's, it's uh, always um, a welcome reminder of where we came from and where we're headed, so thank you for that. Um, I want to personally thank uh, several VIPs that have taken the time to come out here this morning. Um, and let me start with uh, one that's very special, and I want to say a personal uh, thanks to Myra Gray. Myra, thanks for your leadership, your steadfast leadership during this time of transition. Uh, it's incredibly important, and, uh, and to the USASAC team, um, was no change. Uh, the mission continued. Uh, you continue opening and closing cases and doing all those things necessary, and that was in part because, one, it's a wonderful organization, and two, because of your steadfast leadership. So thank you, Myra, for that. Uh, Lieutenant General Retired Gary Spear and his wife, Catherine, sir, thank you so much for being here. I know you're a long time, uh, have been a long time mentor to Alan, and so it's really nice to see you here. Um, our CASAs, um, uh, our CASA, Ms. Chris McBride, Chris, thank you for your steadfast support. Uh, and then our CASA Emeritus, uh, Joe, thank you, sir, for, uh, for your steadfast support. We've also got Ms. Wicker sitting over there, uh, Marion, my teammate, uh, Major General Gavin Lawrence, our new G3, and his lovely wife, Becky, um, General Robinson, Lori, thanks for being here, Tom, thanks for being here. Um, and we also have some former Commanding Generals USASAC, uh, Major General Retired Mark McDonald, Major General Retired Bruce Scott. Um, I, I told Alan earlier that uh, there's probably about 120 to 130 retired general officers who live in the greater Huntsville area, um, which is one is a testament to the wonderful community that we have here. Um, and, uh, and the other piece is he's not going to lack for help. Um, so, uh, so there's lots of folks here that can help him out. Um, and I know that there's several former commanding generals of USASAC who are very willing to do that. Um, Command Sergeant Major General Jimmy Sellers, my battle buddy, his uh, lovely wife, Seanette, uh, thank you too for being here. And of course, I would be remiss and in trouble if I did not recognize my lovely wife, Cindy. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, now, before I talk a little bit about Alan and why our, Army chose for, why our Army chose him for this critical assignment, I want to formally recognize and welcome his family. I always like to start at the, uh, at the very top. Um, and the very top begins with his wife of 27 years, Kristen. Look, 27 years being married in, this, in today's time is, is wonderful. Uh, it's a wonderful accomplishment. 27 years as a military family with all the moves um, and all the things that, uh, that we ask our military families to do is an incredible accomplishment. And, uh, and one that, look, Alan just came back from Iraq. And, uh, and they were in France. Everybody's, yeah, yeah, France, that's wonderful. They went from France. She went home to California, moved her household goods to California, uh, stayed there for a year while Alan was, uh, was in Iraq. And the thing is, is that our military families and our spouses just do this. This is just part of what we are. And so, Chris and I want to say thank you very much uh, for what you do. Now, she is, she is also, I, I have this theory, right? Those that serve, serve. And, uh, and so, she is, uh, has a master's degree in education, and she's been a school teacher for several years. So, those that serve, serve. She's also provided family support and mentored other spouses during the, of their many more remote assignments, um, which is foreign area officers 
you're in foreign areas, right? And uh, so they've lived in places like Mali, uh, the, Demo uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo. They've moved 15 times together since they first met in Hawaii when Allen was the platoon leader in the 25th Division. Now since then, as you've heard me say, they've traveled the world and they've raised two incredible daughters. So we have with us today, Second Lieutenant Elizabeth Pepper and her husband, Second Lieutenant Matt Moore. So Elizabeth, uh, good to see you. I, I think you slid into home this morning, uh, arriving here. Um, Elizabeth is an engineer officer stationed at Joint Base Lewis McCord. And Matt is currently stationed at Fort Novacell here in Alabama where he's going, undergoing aviation flight school training. Their youngest daughter, Anna, couldn't be here today, but she's online, I think. Um, she is studying biochemistry at uh, Bernard College in New York City. Um, and so for this core nucleus family, you can see they're scattered, they're all serving, they're all doing well, and that's a testament to the strong Army families that we have. So let's give them a round of applause. We're also uh, very honored to have Alan's father and stepmother, Klein and Julia Pepper, who drove down here from the great state of North Carolina. Um, uh, Klein and Julia, welcome. And we also have Alan's mom and stepfather, Tricia and Don Derringer, who traveled here from Delaware. And so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for being here as well. This means a lot uh, to Alan. It means a lot to us that you would, um, that you would uh, traipse on down here to the great state of Alabama. And so, uh, so welcome. Um, Look, we live in an interconnected world now more than ever. Because of that, the strength of a military isn't just measured by the power of its own forces, but also by the strength of his allies and partners. Napoleon is believed to have once said that, if he, he, that he'd rather fight as an alliance than, than to be part of one. Um, let me say that again. He would rather fight an alliance than to be part of an alliance. Well, how did that work out for him, right? So an alliance can be a critical strategic advantage that's why it's imperative that our partners are equipped with what we need them to have and they are trained to the standards we need them to hold so that we can fight together. Because when we ensure that our allies are well prepared and well equipped, we fortify our collective defense and we enhance interoperability between our forces. That makes the alliance strong, it promotes stability and deters aggression. And then if that fails, it helps us win wars. As you heard earlier, USASAC is, is tasked with building partner capacity Supporting, supporting combatant commander engagement strategies and strengthening our global partnerships. The commanding general of such an organization needs to be an expert in this field. He needs to understand the nuances of both military readiness and diplomacy, and he needs to know how to lead team, a team of teams to make things happen. And I'm proud to say Alan Pepper has those qualities and he has what it takes to command. He's a dedicated leader with a distinguished 31 year career Allen has served in several key assignments that, I have helped, that have helped prepare him to lead USASAC. He initiated and oversaw the reposturing of U.S. peacekeepers in the U.N. mission in Mali while serving as the commander of our military observers group in that country. He provided Washington and our combatant commanders with clear understandings of the French and Congolese defense priorities while serving as the defense attache in both countries. And he successfully argued for the restart of discussions surrounding the higher military commission in Iraq, despite a series of attacks in the country. This helped set the stage for the transition, um, for a transition of operation inherent resolved and strengthen our relationship with the Iraqi military. And now, Alan joins us after serving as our senior defense official and defense attache in Iraq, a challenging assignment to say the least. And so I say Alan has all these qualities um, this is all what is written on paper, but I've seen it personally, uh, his, his qualities of being able to work with an alliance. I've seen it being able to work some very critical issues because we did it together in Germany when I was the commander of the 21st TSC. So I went to France to observe the arrival of a roll-on, roll-off ship carrying a combat aviation brigade that was deploying to Germany and Poland. And we were in, I first met Alan in Dunkirk, France famous port, one we had not been back to in probably 50 years. And to say that there was uh, some challenging moments um, with that uh, and some friction points is an understatement. Now I will tell him that, I will tell you that the first time we met, we met over a, a light lunch with, uh, with French general officers 
in, uh, in a, a little French officers club in Dunkirk where we, we lunched on uh, filet mignon. Um, I think it was a really nice little white wine and uh, some kind of salad and some kind of foofy dessert. Um, and uh, I was impressed, but I, Alan, I want to remind you, you're not going to get that here. <laughs> It'll be barbecue, pork rinds, and a PBR. And so, um, but it was, uh, it was, we had a, a, a very good uh, engagement where we talked about our role allies have when it, when it takes uh, allies to allow us access to their port facilities uh, so that we can execute the things that we need to do as an army. And, uh, and Alan was, was a critical part of that entire process, which actually worked out very, very well and has definitely strengthened our relationship with our French allies. So I know it. I've seen it. I've lived it. He's got everything he needs, and he is 100% qualified to lead this organization. Alan, we have the utmost confidence in your abilities, and I can assure the men and women of USASAC that they are in good hands with this great team. So Alan and Christian, congratulations. I look forward to serving shoulder to shoulder with you as we continue the great work of this command. I look forward to being your neighbor in the neighborhood and getting you moved in and settled in. And I know that the Peppers are gonna be great uh, members of this local community. They're excited about being here. This is the first time in more than 22 years. Think about that, folks. This is the first time in more than 22 years that they've either been stationed, that they've been stationed somewhere else other than Washington, D.C or overseas. Um, now, I've also heard that Alan has already been uh, uh, indoctrinated to the ways of Alabama, and he has um, uh, been told he has to declare. Um, so we'll let him uh, do that in his personal time, but you don't have that much time because football season has started. Um, and so, uh, so please join me in welcoming the Pepper family officially to Redstone Arsenal. Now to the men and women of USASAC, your character, competence, and commitment is what makes this command great. Each of you reflects the strength of our nation. With your help, we will continue to build partner capacity and, and deliver precision sustainment and material readiness to our soldiers from the Joint Strategic Support Area to the tactical point of contact. Thank you. This will defend. Be all you can be. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Commanding General, U.S. Army Security Assistance Command, Brigadier General Alan J. Pepper. Good morning. It's a beautiful day to be a soldier and a wonderful day to be at Redstone Arsenal. Thank you to General Mohan for your kind remarks and your confidence, allowing me to lead a command with worldwide impact and to become a part of the great AMC team. It's a tremendous pleasure to join the organization. I'll start my approximately 45 minute speech by thanking some people for being here this morning. Thanks to my folks for traveling from Delaware and North Carolina, yet another concrete sign of your support, which has been unwavering over the years. Thanks to Kristen, who continues to be the rock of our family through yet another Army PCS. And to Elizabeth and Matthew, part of our next generation of Army leaders who made the trip from Forts Lewis and Novacell and to Anna, who is likely watching this on a small screen in New York. Thanks to amazing mentors who have supported me since my lieutenant days 30 years ago and continue to do so today, as evidenced by the presence of Gary Spear, Stan Clemens, Bruce Scott, Ross Clemens, and Nick Lovelace. It's a tremendous honor to have you here today. Thanks to friends like the Songs and Dea Primus, who made the long trips to support us, showing that you continue to be part of the Army team, though your days in uniform may be behind you. I'd also like to thank a, an Army family, a great Army family, the Nielsens, who made the trip down uh, from Fort Campbell. John Nielsen, currently an infantry battalion commander of the 101st, truly the, the point, of, point of the spear in a transforming unit, one of the chief of staff of the Army's highest priorities. And they made the trip down with a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old. So a two-and-a-half-hour drive with three little ones. I think that's in dog years, that's like, that's like seven hours. So, uh, so thank you. Uh, and thank you to the USASAC team for welcoming Kristen and me. USASAC's mission is at the forefront of world events right now. I've watched USASAC from afar, in a sense, over the years, 
whether it was working with the SATMO team in the Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo on a proposal to train a Congolese Light Infantry Battalion in that complex environment, or seeing the Office of Security Cooperation in Baghdad working with USASAC on major programs to develop the air defense and rotary wing aircraft capabilities of the Iraqi security forces. I've also had the opportunity to observe USASAC alumni in action as they demonstrated their expertise and professionalism and expressed their pride in their association with this dynamic organization. These experiences me, make me excited to join you all for USASAC's next chapter. Working on embassy country teams and an Army Service Component Command over the last 15 years, I've developed a strong appreciation for the importance of security assistance and security cooperation writ large as tools to strengthen resolute partners, to influence fence sitters who may be attracted by competitors, and to interfere with the plans of our adversaries. Ensuring the readiness of our international partners is also a key to ensuring the strategic readiness of our own army. I look forward to learning much more about the DOD security assistance enterprise, ensuring we're aligned with the Army's priorities by collaborating with Mr. Pat Mason, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Army for Defense Exports and Cooperation and his team, and constantly seeking opportunities to make our system more effective and more efficient in coordination with joint and Army entities, as well as industry and partners. All of this with the goal of reinforcing the Team USA brand for quality in equipment, training, and support, delivering on our, our commitments along timelines that support our nation's needs. I'm honored to be able to lead the AMC Security Assistance Enterprise, and I'm proud to be part of the Army's face to the world. Kristen and I have heard wonderful things about Redstone Arsenal, and Federal Center of Excellence and the greater Huntsville community. We look forward to working with our teammates within AMC and other organizations here on post and the local community. Thanks to the leaders of various sister organizations for coming out to support you to SAC this morning. I look forward to working with you in the months ahead. Finally, thanks to the behind the scene volunteers, G3, Protocol, and Commandant team who made this ceremony a success today and to all who have welcomed us so warmly here. We are excited to contribute to this wonderful community. Strength and cooperation, this will defend, be all you can be, Hua. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the singing of the Army song. The words are printed on the back of your programs. <laughs> This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for attending. Please join us for reception as we welcome Brigadier General Pepper and his family in the USASAC Great Hall. Escorts are standing by at the doors behind me to show you to the reception area. Strength and cooperation, this will defend, be all you can be. <laughs>